what the system is, embrace that system and just follow it and you're gonna have a really, really good experience. Okay, so tonight our topic is the top 10 ways to show up to get the paycheck and the life of your dreams. So this is and is not about Juice Plus. It is and is not because your Juice Plus business is a direct reflection of your life. How you show up in Juice Plus is how you're already showing up in life. And you might say, no, I'm not. No, that's not true. I actually had someone say that to me. I'm not like this in my life, right? Well, what's happening is sometimes the Juice Plus business, even though it's so much fun and it's so rewarding, right? It will bring out our blind spots and it will bring out the things in our life that are, I don't want to say weaknesses or flaws. I would say vulnerabilities. So maybe you aren't like this in your regular life, but you just haven't had a challenge yet that brings them up, right? So the gift of this Juice Plus business, even though it doesn't feel good sometimes and it can make you itch and squirm, make us itch and squirm, um, but the beauty of this is that this is a personal development course just as much as it is a business, just as much as it is a mission. It really is because it will with a spotlight and a magnifying glass show you your blind spots, your vulnerabilities. And if you stick with it and you walk through the messy, as Sandy said, our friend Sandy says, the beauty part is that it will also show you your gifts. So just like you didn't know what your vulnerable spots were, you didn't know that you had weaknesses like this and you're like, why am I struggling with this? I seem to be doing great in my life. The beautiful piece is you also have gifts that you don't know that you have. And you're going to find those gifts in this business and say, I didn't know I could do that. I had no idea I could show up that way. I had no idea I had that strength. Because you can't find the strength until you find the blind spot. Because the blind spot unlocks the strength. When you find the weakness or the strength or the vulnerability, right, you got to work that and work through it. And then you get the reward of the gift. So the people who stick with this business and they don't run away from it, and believe me, I'm going to be real and raw. There are times where you want to run for cover, right? Because there are a lot of things that are sure as heck easier than this. I'm telling you, way easier. But they're not as rewarding, and they're not going to bring out the stuff we're talking about. Some of the things that come up for people are worrying about what others think of us, um, worrying about getting it wrong, not wanting to make mistakes, wanting to get it right, feeling like we have to know everything comparison, comparing ourselves to other people, feeling like we're not good enough, um, looking at our journey and thinking it's not going the way it's supposed to. Some of those things will, will come at you on this journey that we call Juice Plus. And I'm telling you, I can speak to, you know, I can speak to you with keeping some of you in mind that I can see right now, I've been doing this a long time with me, like Chris Rankin, she's been there in the beginning, from the beginning, I've been doing this 11 years, she will tell you and give you a big amen, I, I know she will, that if you stick with this, it's not about what you think it's about, right? You think it's about a certain goal or a certain thing, but that's not what it's about. It's, it's about getting polished like a stone and becoming the person you were designed to be. All the books that we read and the podcasts and all these things that we're filling ourselves with, which we should, I will tell you one thing. This business is all of that jazz in action. All the podcasts, all the books, all the stuff we listen to, the Rachel Hollis, all this stuff. It's great. Trust me. I love it all. I live it all. However, you got to put it into action. And this business puts it into action. Our friend Sandy, I've mentioned her twice. She is um, in her early 30s. And she earns a huge living in Juice Plus and has touched thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. And she's just very, very wise. And she told me the Juice Plus business is where the jig is up. She's a pretty cool girl. She's a pretty hippie girl. She's a big yogini. She's like, everybody who knows her just loves her to pieces, right? We, Sandy has a big fan club. And she says the jig is up because the jig is up when you get into Juice Plus. You can't run. You can't hide. You know why? Because you can't hide from yourself. <laughs> All your garbage will come up. So tonight we're going to talk about the 10 ways to show up to have the best life, which happens to be the 10 ways to have the biggest paycheck in Juice Plus. Happens to be the same way to show up to have the biggest team. 
happens to be the same way to show up to have the best relationships. It's all the same thing. Okay. All right. And none of this is new material, right? You could write on a list right now if I said, okay, write the list. But what I'm going to do is talk through each point. Okay. The first way for us to show up to have the best life and the best paycheck, et cetera, is to be grateful. And I know it's like, you know, you could just say it, it, it's, it's the word gratitude can almost become white noise because we hear it everywhere, right? Grateful, grateful, hashtag gratitude, whatever. But I mean, like really being grateful. I mean, like being grateful when you don't have anything or being grateful when your business is in the tank, being grateful when things are not good. That's what we're talking about. That kind of grateful where you can see the beauty in the mess. You can see the beauty in it and say, you know what? And it's not just, well, at least I have my health. That's grateful too. That's gratitude. But what if it's even bigger than that? What if I am grateful for the obstacles? I am grateful for the mess. I am grateful for the challenges. I am grateful that I had 11 customers cancel this month. Can you imagine being grateful for that? But what if you were? What if you said, I am grateful that happened because there's a lesson in there for me. There is something in there that I'm supposed to learn. Beginning our day and ending our day with gratitude. Starting our day and ending our day, being grateful for what we have, what we've been given, and the messy parts. That's the part I think people don't talk about enough. Write the 10 things you're grateful for. No one writes down anything negative. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my well, that, that, that to me, it's good, but that's still an autopilot. If you really want to dig in, be grateful for your super difficult relationship with your oldest child. <laughs> right? So gratitude. You too? Okay. They call them grace growers, you know. Not everybody gets one. Okay. Number two, positivity and high vibe. We could spend an hour on this. But positivity and high vibe is not the same of everything's great, life is great, rah, rah, woohoo, right? That's how I used to be. I was like a cheerleader. How are you great? How are you awesome? You know, and I was low vibe and I didn't even know it, right? So, so we could do an hour long talk just on what that means. But, but, but being positive can be being calm and centered and totally chill. It's leading with gratitude, seeing the world through a lens of gratitude, not just the glass is half, isn't half empty, right? And it's not just the glass is half full, right? It's there's an abundance of glasses, so why am I worrying about it, <laughs> right? That kind of positivity. Being a high vibe kind of person is a person who attracts people to them. People want to be around you, right? We're not complaining all the time. We're not complaining about life and complaining about our relationships and complaining about our team and complaining about our customers. We're too high vibe for that. So the person who gets the life that they want and the paycheck that they want is sometimes not like that, right? But they, they do their best to get right back into positivity and high vibe as often as they can. They shift. They shift themselves into that. So they're looking at the positive spin on everything. They're looking at the circle of people they hang around with. And they're saying, are these people positive? Are these people bringing me down? Are these people complaining negative people? Are they people who want to change the world and who, who are going to cheer for me the loudest when I do well? Right? Positivity. Number three is instead of being a go-getter, being a go-giver. There's a book called The Go-Giver. Being a go-giver is someone who puts others first and they give to give, they don't give to get. Just today, Stephen Furtick in his sermon was talking about this. And he was talking about if you give because you want the credit, you want people to know, then your reward is that. I thought it was brilliant. Your reward is the reason you did it. So whatever your reason is for giving or doing something, your reward will be that. Does that make sense? If my whole reason, okay, if my whole reason to get on here and do this Zoom with you all is because I want to be the leader and I want to be in front of everybody, I want everybody to see my face, and I want, that's all I'm going to get. I can get that. That's what I'll get. That's all I will get. 
But if I come to this because I want to pour into you, because I truly care about you, because I, I choose you over my couch and watching a TV show with my husband right now, and I choose you and your life over my own paycheck, then that's what I will get. So givers give to give, they don't give to get. It doesn't mean you give your shirt off your back every day. It doesn't mean you can't be wealthy. It doesn't mean you can't be successful. That's not what giving is. But truly caring about other people so much, you ready for this one? That you're willing to have a tough conversation with them. You care about them so much that you're going to have a brave conversation with them and sacrifice your fear of whether or not they're going to like you or reject you because you care about them that much. Maybe it's to bring up Juice Plus. Maybe their child's been suffering and you're like, oh, Lord, I don't want to be the one that brings this up. Everybody's telling her they have a solution. Well, if I'm truly a giver, I will bring it up because it's not about me. It's not about my ego. It's not about what she thinks of me. It's about empowering her and giving her the information she needs to make that decision for her child. And giving to give means, as Stephen Furtick was talking about, not getting credit. Not worrying about whether you get credit. Just giving to give. So successful people who have the paycheck and the life that you dream of are go-givers, not just go-getters. The fourth one is showing up as a forever student, forever. You never arrive. You're, you're always learning. You're always open. You're always, always looking at what you don't know that you don't know. So there's what you, what you know, right? Sharita knows that she is a female. I don't know Sharita well enough to answer these other two, so I'll answer for myself. I know that I don't know how to speak Chinese. I'm positive. So, so I know that I don't know how to speak Chinese. So that's what I know that I don't know. But then there's what Sharita and I don't even know that we don't know. What I don't know that I don't know. That's where all the magic is. That's where all the miracles are. That is where all the growth is. That is where the zest is. That's where all the secret sauce is. It's what we don't know that we don't know. It, there's so much that we think we know. There's so much that we know. There's so much that we know that we don't know. But what about all the stuff that we don't even know that we don't know? Successful people are always teachable. They are a student always. Even if they're an expert at something, they're a student always. They never arrive. Our upline, Cynthia Gompers, who's been in this business for 30 years, says, oh, you never arrive, Jill. She's in her 70s. She said, I am always still sitting at those conferences taking notes. I will always go to trainings. I will always learn from everyone. She takes notes when someone who's, this woman is a multimillionaire, and she takes notes when a woman who's making $500 a month in Juice Plus is teaching. That is, that is how she is. She's always a student. What can this person teach me? So being a forever student and also realizing that every situation, every interaction, every person you come up against is teaching you something. Whatever you, your beliefs are, we all have different beliefs. I'm going to use the word God. What, that God is using that person to teach you something about you. And if you choose not to be a student and not to be teachable, that's okay. He's just going to come around and give you another one with different, different meat suit, right? We're all in a meat suit, different meat suit, different time, different day. And you know the saying, they say that you, you know, their first is a little tickle and there's a little whisper and there might be a little flick on the head and then there's a smack in the head, right? Then there's like a two by four in the head. And then there's like a Mack truck and then there's a 747. Like you better get the lesson at some point because it's just going to keep coming, right? You might go through five boyfriends and you can't figure out why they all have the same problem, right? Because you didn't learn the lesson. You keep attracting the same guy who has a different meat suit on, right? So being a forever student. If not, you'll come up against the same problems in your Juice Plus business. The same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Why do I keep hitting the same wall? Because I haven't learned the lesson. Why I haven't learned the lesson? Because I haven't put my ego down far enough to be a student. I haven't set my ego down enough to be a student and say, what are you teaching me? 
why do I keep having customers cancel? This isn't just bad luck. This isn't bad karma. I'm causing this somehow. What's happening? Why is this happening? What should I learn about myself? Why do I keep having X, Y, Z? Okay, so being a student. Number five, showing up, being willing to have two best friends, vulnerability and authenticity. Vulnerability and authenticity. Someone said one time that they're best friends, they're always hanging around together for a reason. Successful people who have the life that they dream of and the paycheck that they dream of are willing to be vulnerable. They're willing to let their guard down. They're willing to connect emotionally with people. They're willing to open themselves up for anything. It could be hurt, it could be insult, but being vulnerable. They're also willing to be authentic, and authentic means real. Real. No highlight reel, oh my life's so great, you know, my marriage is great, everything's perfect, I get my crock pot meal in, which is completely vegan and, and dairy free and non-GMO, and it's done by eight o'clock in the morning and I got my workout done, and I have no problems with anybody in my life, and I'm making tons of money, and I also was able to do this, 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 and then this all before five o'clock. And you see what I mean? You can have a kick butt life, right? And still be authentic and say, oh yeah, I did do those things. I did make that meal by nine o'clock, and yes, it is clean and vegan and blah, 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 blah. And I did exercise, and I did do my affirmations, and I did have my quiet time, and I did do this, and I did do this, but guess what? I'm real enough to tell you that I have this going on or that going on. I'm real enough to say to my friend or my team member or my customer, oh, I hear you. I hear you. I have a struggle like that too. My behind the scenes ain't too pretty either sometimes. Being vulnerable and being authentic, I would call them superpowers when they look like weaknesses to most people. Not on our team. We don't think that way. But out in the world, out in the other world, we live in a bubble and juice plus, right? But out in the other world, most people see that as a weakness. And we don't. Being willing to be real. Now, Brene Brown talks about oversharing. Oversharing is when you're too vulnerable and you're, you're so authentic, you're going to tell your whole life story. You know, everything that's bad has happened. So I'm going to be so real with you, just get ready. And okay, well, people don't really need to hear all that. You know, you can save that for your best friend. But being real, people will be attracted to you like a magnet if you are vulnerable and authentic. You can be a hot mess and, and create a lot of abundance in your life if you are vulnerable and authentic. People don't want perfect. People aren't looking for a perfect leader. People aren't looking for perfect friends. And if they are, you don't want them. You don't want them in your life. All right, number six, showing up, not giving a hoot about the opinions of others, knowing that, that what people think of us is none of our business. So this was hard for me because I care about people and I want to be liked, right? If you don't care what anyone thinks, you're just going to walk out and go to the grocery store naked. I mean, hello, we all care a little bit. We have societal rules and we have like, right? If you don't care what anybody thinks, you're going to go to, to the referee like we had in our game today and just punch them right in the nose, right? So we care a little bit, but you know what we're saying, not being paralyzed by the thoughts of other people, not designing our life based on what other people think of us, on the opinions of them, what they think of us, what they think of our job, what they think of Juice Plus, especially in a business like this. If you're new, Put your suit of armor on, wrap yourself in bubble wrap, because people will try to attack this and attack you because they're scared. They're afraid because you are becoming bigger and better than you were. And it scares the crap out of them because they're worried that you're going to leave them. You're going to abandon them. They're worried that it's going to remind them that they are playing small. It's reminding them that they are not being courageous. 
you're okay with them not doing this. But I'm telling you, some people in your life will try to tear this down and tear you down and poke holes in it because they're projecting their own stuff onto you. So people who have the paycheck and the life that they dream of love everybody and they respect that everyone has their own opinion. They just don't live their life based on that. When someone has an opinion, you can use this approach. I started doing this about 10 years ago when I went to a personal development course called Landmark Education. And they said, respect and honor the boundaries of other people, but you do not have to buy their story. So I can respect and honor your, where you are, your opinion, let's say, but I don't have to buy it. You can say whatever you want. It's going to bounce right off of me. I'm not going to make fun of you for it or tell you that you're wrong or make you wrong, but I don't have to take that in. If you think Juice Plus is expensive, I totally hear you. And I completely disagree. Thank you very much. Right? You think Juice Plus is blah, blah. Okay, great. I, I, I hear you and I honor where you are. And I, that's not how I feel. You think that nobody wants Juice Plus because it's too expensive? Yep, I totally hear you. I don't have to buy your story though. I'm choosing a different story. So, so being bulletproof when it comes to the opinions of other people. Number seven, this might be, might be a surprising one to you, but I learned this one the hard way. Knowing when it's time to rest. Self-care. Self-care, self-love again, Pinterest, hashtag, it's everywhere, self-love, love, you know? And it can be white noise. It's like, what are they even talking about? It's whatever feeds your soul. That is what self-care is. If it gets you back to your core values, it gets you back on track, it gets you back to where you need to be, and it feeds your soul, that is self-care for you. Self-care for someone else may not be self-care for you. Knowing when to rest. See, it's all about hashtag hustle, right? There's someone really popular right now, and believe me, I love her. I love her book. I love all of it. But I, I, I will tell you, there's one thing I've been resisting commenting every time I see her stuff. There's never, any, there's never anything in there about knowing when to rest. It's hustle, hustle, hustle. You get up and you do this, and then you do this, and you do this, and you do this. It's like, okay, but you can't live like that forever. You will crash. You can't live like that all the time. And so sometimes you have to pull back and say no to things and physically rest or just rest your brain, right? Take care of yourself and go slow to go fast. That's a secret to success that I learned the hard way where I literally, I literally got adrenal fatigue because I, I literally burnt myself out. Like that's what happens when you have adrenal fatigue. You, you don't have any gas in the gas tank anymore. And you can't get any more. You have to wait till it like regenerates itself. I was in bed for three weeks and could not get out of bed because I never took care of myself. I took care of everybody but me, my kids, my husband, I, my job, um, Juice Plus, babysitting, all the other stuff. I poured into everybody else and did not pour into myself because I felt like I didn't deserve that and I felt guilty doing that. And, I, and ain't nobody got time for that anyway. I didn't have time to take care of myself. I'm like, are you kidding me? I have so much to do. I don't have time to take care of myself. I have a job and everything else. And I learned the hard way. So I urge you, as you do this Juice Plus business, I, I, if anyone tells you to hustle, hustle, hustle all the time, listen to somebody else. Because what I'll tell you is there is time for strategic imbalance where you hustle your butt off. You literally just go till you can't go anymore for a small amount of time. And then you pull back and you pour in and you rest and you go slow to go fast. And then you find another time where you're gonna hustle. So it's like a marathon. You're running a marathon and every now and then you're gonna sprint. But then you're gonna go back. Did anybody watch the marathon today? It was so cool watching the, the women who are winning in the end. I thought it was so cool. Um, but you're, you're sprinting, but then you can't sprint the whole thing. You can't sprint a marathon. This is a marathon and life is a marathon. You cannot sprint it. You will absolutely sabotage yourself and, the, and some of the damage will be, um, you won't be able to um, repair from. 
All right. Number eight, understanding and, and living by the law of the farm and compounding interest. The law of the farm is consistently planting those seeds, consistently planting those seeds, not leaving the field, consistently planting the seeds, and knowing that the harvest will come when it is supposed to come. Not trying to get the one big sale. I'm going to get one doctor and that's going to be my Juice Plus business. I'm going to get a series of, of health food stores that have Juice Plus in there and then I'm going to be cashing in. Everybody has that thought in the beginning. I did too. If I could only get a doctor, right? What you will find is that the law of the farm is far more powerful. And the law of compounding interest is your best friend. You know the law of compounding interest when you look at the fact that I don't know his name, but there is a real person who worked for UPS and he made $14,000 a year, $14,000 a year, and he is now worth $70 million because he took 20% of his paycheck, 50 maybe, I can't remember, a huge amount of his paycheck and never touched it and saved it and saved it and saved it and kept doing that. That's the law of compounding interest. And then when he retired, he was worth $70 million. True story, it was on uh, Tony Robbins Business Mastery. So the law of compounding interest in this business is little bits of effort applied consistently over a long period of time, create huge, huge results little bits of effort, effort com applied consistently over a long period of time. That is your best friend in Juice Plus, life in general. That little bit of, of activity done consistently is like the person who works out for 20 minutes a day, five days a week, six days a week, as opposed, as opposed to the person like me. This is my biggest struggle who stops, starts, stops, starts. I'm gonna get in super great shape for three months and then one week turns into six months and then a year. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna start. That's what people do in Juice Plus. I can identify with it because I do this with exercise. Don't ask me why, I'm still working on it. But it doesn't work. It never will work. You will never get the success and you never get the results. Just like I will never get in shape doing that. So that little bit of activity consistently, it, it might be 20 minutes a day. Oh, I don't have time to work my Juice Plus business. First of all, I don't have to buy that story because we all have 24 hours in a day. You could find time. What if you did a little bit consistently every day rather than trying to spend three hours on it or four hours or five hours once a week? Yeah, but Monday is my Juice Plus day, okay. Okay, hey, the 30th of every month is my workout day. Fine, we're twins. Same thing. What if you did a little bit every day? Just a little bit. Jill, I'm never gonna get results like that. Okay, if you say so. There's something called the law of compounding interest that says that you will. You will get the results. And the law of the farm is also saying that you will get the harvest when the harvest is supposed to happen. Okay. Number nine, showing up as 100% responsible for their life. They own their stuff. 100% responsible. Now, this is a hard one. This is, I'm willing to admit that I have designed my life to be exactly as it is. That I am the reason I am where I am. No, I'm not. I have this jerk husband or this jerk boyfriend, or I had this tragedy happen or this health issue or this financial thing. You didn't have to deal with that. You know what my childhood was? And the answer is still yes. And this was the hardest thing for me to get because I had so many obstacles. I had really bad childhood. I had years, I had things happen to me I wouldn't wish to, on anybody. And I, I was in a marriage before that was just so empty and he was an addict and I tried to save him for 20 years. and 
went through just so much stuff and, and drowning in debt and wondering what my purpose was and trying to just get through day after day, working 50 hours a week, babysitting on the side, trying to keep myself together for my kids. Trust me, I know what it's like to have obstacles. I know what it's like to have stuff. I know what it's like to be at rock bottom and begging God for an answer. Begging. I know what that feels like. And once I figured out that even though all those things were real and all those things were happening, it was my decision whether or not they were happening to me. That was my decision. I had to figure out a way to say, this stuff isn't happening to me. It's happening. It's here. But I will decide if it's happening to me or not. Because I can do anything. And I'm capable of anything. And I own my circumstances. And I own that debt. Do you know how hard it was to say? I didn't create the debt. It was the spouse I was with who didn't work for four years because he was so sick with his addiction. He didn't work for four, four years. And I was working as a nurse and babysitting and trying to keep us afloat. Well, you would, as my friend, you'd go, well, that wasn't your fault, right? Because that's what I want you to say. It wasn't your fault, Jill. You didn't do that. But guess what I had to finally say to myself? I somehow allowed that to happen. I did create that. I did create that. There's no blame, but I did create that. It's like me, anyway, we could apply a million scenarios to this, but owning your life doesn't just mean I'm taking control of my life, right? I'm going to be successful. That's what Pinterest will tell you. That's what Instagram will tell you. Owning your life means I'm owning all of it. All of it is on me. Not blame, not I'm a bad person, but I own it. This is my theater and I'm the director of my theater. I'm the reason I have these relationships. I'm the reason that I have that relationship that is toxic or not good for me. I'm the reason I don't have the finances that I want. And I'm also the one who can change it. But my team doesn't do anything. I'm not where I need to be in Juice Plus because I don't have the team that wants to do anything. I hear you and I get it. And I used to say that and I felt the same way. And the answer is, then why don't you? And I know that's hard to hear. Why don't you? You are the one getting in your own way. You are the one creating the situation where you don't have an excited team who wants to work. And it's not because there's something wrong with you. There's something that you're doing that's creating that. And maybe what's serving you is the story. Maybe what's serving you is being able to say, this isn't working for me either. And I know that's hard to hear, but I'm telling you, that was me. I was so used to having something to complain about because of my childhood and because of the situation I was in before in my previous marriage. So much negativity, so much drama and heartache and awful stuff. I didn't know how not to be like that. So unknowingly, subconsciously, unknowingly, subconsciously, I attracted a team that I could complain about. Not as people. I love them as people. But I mean, you know what I mean? They're not doing what I want. They're not doing... It was my way of keeping my shtick going. Are you feeling me? It was my shtick. I had to keep it going because I didn't know how else to be. Because what would happen if I actually got a beautiful, wonderful team? Well, I don't deserve that. Well, that's probably the problem. What Linda even then taught me is that's like saying, okay, God, okay, universe, I'm ready. I'm ready. Totally ready. Bring it on. But you're doing this the whole time. You can't say you can do this, but you can't say, yes, I'm ready and have your hand up. The hand up is I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy of it. I'll never have it. I've never had money. I've always been broke. I've always had negative relationships. So that is what you will get. Either no change, right? Or you're going to get more of that. Because we don't get what we want. We get what we are. We get what we focus on. We get what we think about. What we think about, we bring about. What we focus on, we expand. You know this. But we forget. And when we can focus on our team that doesn't do anything and my customers don't want it, and we're just going to get more of that. We're just going to get more of that. It's like having a bullhorn to the universe and saying, bring me more unmotivated people. 
I want more. The universe doesn't understand the difference. It's just like when your body doesn't know the difference between good stress and bad stress. Do you know that? Like physiologically, your body does not know the difference. Well, I don't have a stressful life. I have a great life. Yeah, but you're constantly, ah! your body doesn't know the difference. So your cortisol levels go up just the same. Your risk for heart disease goes up just the same. Your risk for cancer goes up just the same. If you're constantly stressed, your body doesn't know the difference between good stress and bad stress. But when it comes to this, it's no different. Okay. <sighs> Got a little worked up there. All right, so number nine was we own our stuff. We own all of it. We also own the outcome of what we say. I'm going to go back to that number nine for a second. We own the outcome of our actions. It's not my fault. It's not in our language. The person who has the life they dream of and the paycheck they dream of, they don't think that way. They don't blame other people. It's not anyone's fault that anything's happening in my life because I'm the director of my theater. It's not my childhood's fault. It's not my parents' fault. It's not this person's fault, that person's fault. It's not my bank account's fault. It's not my jerk at work's fault. No. And it's not my fault either, by the way, because there is no fault. There is no blame. It's just what is. It's the result of my actions. It's the result of how I'm showing up. It's the result of my energy. It's the result of my thoughts every day. It's the result of the words that I speak to myself and about myself and out into the world and about the world. Everything around me is the result of how I am showing up. And if deep down I feel that I'm not worthy for any of it, it doesn't matter how many affirmations and positivity. You can have 150 dream boards. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hard you pray. If you don't believe inside that you're worthy or deserve it, you are not going to get it. So number nine is owning all of it without judgment or blame against yourself, by the way, but owning all of it. All right, number 10, the last one, is not just being willing to get out of your comfort zone. Again, that's another common, we hear this all the time, right? Get outside of your comfort zone. But I mean living outside of your comfort zone, like embracing it to the point where you're, you're prepared to be scared a lot. Like you're prepared to be so uncomfortable that you're like sweating bullets uncomfortable. And you get so used to being uncomfortable that you don't know how else to be. And one way you can practice this that we learned in The Big Leap, there's a book called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. It's a wonderful book. It's really deep, it's kind of heavy. It took me a while to get through it. But he talks about get up on a different side of bed in the morning, drive a different way to work, drink your coffee in, a, in the opposite cup. Wear an outfit you've never worn before. Switch all your stuff around in your closet. Move your furniture around. Just switch things up. To me, this isn't what he was saying. He said it for a different reason. But this also gets you comfortable with being uncomfortable. So you're not just on autopilot. We know, and everyone's heard this a million times, that everything you want is outside of your comfort zone. Otherwise, you would already have it, right? It has to be out of your comfort zone, otherwise you have it. So in this Juice Plus business, you, you, it is imperative that you're willing to be brave. It's imperative that you're willing to jump even if you don't know there's a net. I mean, it's imperative. It, you cannot find the success you want without getting uncomfortable. If there is a, a Zoom meeting and you can't stand talking in front of people, volunteer to speak. Just do it. Because the worst thing, worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to grow. That's the worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to grow from it. You've heard that, that saying, you know, what if I fall? Oh, darling, well, what if, what, what if you fly? Right? You have a team full of people here. Just look around on these pictures here. Even people who don't know you, who believe in you, who are fighting for you to be successful at this. Is it because of numbers and goals? And No. They're fighting for you to be, have the best life you can have because they believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Everyone on here, I'm telling you right now, I'm, you know, um, I just see uh, Holly here, okay? If someone on here who's not new, who's new, who doesn't know Holly, I guarantee you, you believe in her more than she believes in her. 
And I guarantee that you believe in me more than I believe in me. Because we can believe in the capability of other people more than ourselves because there's no filter there. We see the other person the way God sees them, 100% capable and perfect. But we look at ourselves with all the flaws and all the hangups and, and incapabilities and all this other stuff. So in this team, people are looking at you and holding you up in a way that you will never be able to do for yourself. And I, I don't say that to sound good or to make you want to be on our team or that is just the way it is. We think differently. We live differently. We treat each other differently. And so you can be uncomfortable and take that risk and know that we've got you. We've got you. You can stand up there and talk. You can stand in front of a room. You can have that conversation when we're not around and we got you. Because we are doing the same thing every day. We are just as scared. We are just as uncomfortable. We are just as itchy. And we are fighting for our lives too. And if 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 I can fight for my life, you can fight for your life. If I can fight for yours, you can fight for mine. And and it, it, that may seem a little heavy for us. Well, I kind of just want to get a discount on this stuff. I mean, if I make 200 bucks, it's fine, Jill. You're getting all weird, you know? I get it. But I'm telling you, you have no idea how big this is. And I get it. And you don't ever have to discover it. You can, you can just do a little bit. That's fine. I'm just talking to anyone who's open to seeing that it could be bigger. It could be much bigger than that. So much bigger than that. Because our life is so much bigger than that. We think that, oh, well, we've got it. I've got it. I've got this. I've got this. I've kind of arrived. I'm kind of good. Kind of good. What if? What if there was more? What if you were met for more? What if you have something in you that's going to change someone's life? And if you play small, you will never change their life. What if it's not even about you? What if it's about serving others and gifting to other people? And you can't do it without that last one of getting uncomfortable. You can do so, you can go so far being comfortable. I mean, honestly, you can. You can, you can, you can fake it enough in this business um, in the beginning, right? Um, but you'll hit a wall where the only way through it is to get uncomfortable, I'm telling you. You're safe people who just already trust you or they just, they're, you know, you have people that just kind of do what you say, right? They trust you enough, they'll, they'll just order. You know, that, that's gonna end at some point. And the only way to get past that is to get outside of yourself and say, okay, here I go. I'm gonna take myself on. I don't like this, but I'm gonna do it. And on the other side, I swear to you that on the other side of that is a gift that you have never experienced before. It is, it is a beautiful, magical gift on the other side. When you walk through that fire and you get there, you're like, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, eat fruits and vegetables, yeah, it can do that. One uncomfortable conversation, making it about someone else, and walking through that fear and doing that will absolutely change every area of your life. And then you do it again, and then you do it again, and you keep leveling up and leveling up and leveling up and leveling up and leveling up. And what you find is you, you attract a different kind of people to you, a different level of people. I'm not talking about status, I'm talking about level according to your chicken list, how they show up in life. You will attract a different level of people if you keep getting brave and uncomfortable and busting through the fear. You won't even recognize yourself in a year and you won't recognize the people you attract to yourself. You won't recognize them because as you level up, they level up. Okay, so we're gonna close with our three uh, team mantras. Um, the first is you are a blessing, whether you do a little or a lot. The second is you can go at your own pace. And the third is that you are acceptable as you are. Yes, we're always improving ourselves. And yes, we're working on ourselves. And yes, we're challenging ourselves. But you don't have to be anyone you're not. Don't ever compare yourself to anybody, let alone anyone on this team. It's just, it, we just don't want you to ever think that way. Everybody is valued. 
everybody is is appreciated no matter what okay well thanks for your time everybody love you so much welcome to everybody who's new i'm so excited about new november